the last day of February in 2022. I'm Emily Taylor. I'm live in my studio. It is 11 o'clock Mountain Time, and most Mondays you can find me here. Uh, last Monday I wasn't here because I was. Um, it was a holiday. So if it's a holiday, um, or I announce that I won't be here, you can. I won't. I won't be there. But I'm here today, and I'm excited to have you join me because. Uh, it's been two weeks since I've been live, and so I've been busy. I've got a lot to share with you, and I'm excited to dig in and, and get talking about that. So um, I'm going to, I actually have a little bit of an agenda today, not an agenda, um, a schedule, a schedule. Okay, so we're going to talk about, first of all, this ladybug quilt. And then my project that's underneath this that I've started, and we're going to move down. I have a magazine article that I want to share with you, um, some reminders about what's going on in the business. So let's start with this quilt. So I um, have wanted to, I, I like to sew. I And a lot of times with a collage quilt, I don't end up piecing things together. Um, and so I just wanted to make this for the fun of it. So what I did is kind of inspired by my little ladybug collage, um, which I think will throw into the garden party quilt along that will be in, did I say May? I think we'll, I think we'll put this there, but I love this little ladybug. And of course, ladybug is my daughter, Amelia. Oh, I have some great news about that. So let me, when I'm done with the ladybug quilt, I'll I'll tell you some some more great news. So um, anyway, I was inspired to create kind of a pixelated ladybug that I could piece together. So I drew this out digitally, added um, you know the grid on top. You can see. So my original plan was to then go ahead and collage and make this look a little more realistic. Um, this is kind of the 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 pixelated pattern and this is the finished quilt top so here we go this is the quilt top um it's it's pixelated right so and it's rather large um as i said i was going to i i just wanted to make something beautiful with some beautiful fabric so I put this together, I had a ton of fun doing it. Let me tell you how I did this. Um, so I sell fabric bundles in um, that are four and a half inch strips and I used all of my fabric <laughs> from, my, from my fabric bundles for this. So all the red and all the green, well, and you know, some of it's not in there, but this will be part of my, um, one of the fabric bundles that's fussy cutting. Um, so anyway, that's what I used. And I just, I showed it to Amelia. As I said, I was going to collage and make it look a little bit more real, but Amelia went crazy over it. And she's like, I have to have that quilt. So anyway, I will be quilting this. Um, there will be no collage. It's just a pixelated quilt top. And it was really fun to do, super easy. Um, and so there you have it. So that's the, that's the ladybug quilt. Um, let me, let me give you one more shot at this so you can see kind of the, it's, it's a big, it's a big old quilt. Anyway, um, so speaking of, speaking of my ladybug, Amelia, she is coming back to work for me full time. So as you know, she took a job with an interior design firm here in Salt Lake and um, she was continuing to work for me and she has 18 credit hours at school. So she just was feeling really overwhelmed and she liked her former boss or so she's coming back. She's coming back full time and I couldn't be more happy and more excited because I love working with Amelia and she's super talented. And as you know, she, um, helps me with customer service and getting your orders out. Amelia is the one that handles all the fulfillment. And she's got a great eye for design. And so um, that's her degree that she's working on. She's almost done. She's going to graduate soon with a degree in art and design, a minor in art history. And then she'll be getting her uh, certificate in interior design. And she wants to, we'll probably work together to start 
something. Actually, we've got a plan, but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. So um, that's the ladybug quilt. Uh, the next thing that I've been working on, you can see right here, is my little old lady who lived in a shoe. Um, now, I shared with you, this has been on the docket for quite some time. Um, it's based on an illustration that I did and kind of inspired by what I used to do. I used to be a mural painter. So years ago, before I had kids, um, I had a really nice little business and I was painting murals in people's homes. I did tons and tons of children's rooms. In fact, I pulled a bunch of photographs to share with you. Um, I did lots of children's books. Um, so here's just a few. So recognize that Winnie the Pooh. These are photos, of course, because we didn't have digital cameras. So um, this was the Sandman, uh, Mother Goose. Um, here we go. Here's another version of the little old lady who lived in a shoe. So I painted these murals in people's homes and it was, it's actually, it was really fun because I, I painted in, um, homes and businesses throughout the Intermountain West. And I, I painted for people like Stephen Covey, um, the author of seven habits of highly effective people. I did some painted, hand painted custom furniture for the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> so anyway, that was really, really fun for me. And this kind of harkens back to that. And I just thought that would be super fun. And I, um, I was also kind of inspired by this darling fabric that I ordered from Michael Miller. Well, I, I ordered it on Etsy, but just the, they have darling, Michael Miller has darling fabric that has little children, right? So um, I thought, oh, this is gonna be awesome fabric to fussy cut and add to the, the little old lady who lived in a shoe. And I think um, it, so far, I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. Um, I'll probably do another nursery rhyme quilt as well. Um, you can see, so part of the reason for doing this is just, I just, in order to maintain a high level of creativity and be inspired every single day, because I'm doing this every single day, I need to have a few different things going on. And so that's why different things, you know, I, I need to piece, I need to do a, a fun wall hanging. That's just something fun. Um, I paint <laughs> too. This is a recent painting that I did. And um, I, I, so that's why I'm doing this. Um, okay, so let me, so that's that. This is something that I hope if you're interested, I will make this quilt. You can see it's a, it's a foundation panel quilt. So the design has been pre-printed in shades of gray. And all I'm doing, I love doing this type of project because it's super, super easy. It's paint by numbers with fabric. So you can see all I'm doing right now is I'm just cutting up pieces, random pieces of fabric, adding it to the, to the foundation panel. And um, it's, it's really fun. So I'll keep you abreast of the progress here. I don't think it's moving on pretty quickly. I don't think it's going to take too much longer. Um, so anyway, that has been going on. Also, some kind of fun news. Um, I'm excited to share this with you. So Art Quilting Studio, I have a an article in here in the most recent. So this is the um, spring 2022 edition of Art Quilting Studio. And I have an article in here about the Pop Art Pups. So there's that. That's kind of exciting news. And, um, okay, now I want to get to um, a giveaway winner. Um, so a couple, about last month, I think it was that we, I posted a questionnaire that um, I'm kind of probing. Um, I have some things up my sleeve about creativity and how to stay inspired and what are the... Um, what are the effects of creativity and how does it en enrich our lives and what are the barriers to creativity and um 
because as I said, I mean, this is, this is what I do. I'm creating all day long. And so I kind of wanted to get, I wanted to know a little bit more about what you all thought about creativity. Um, so I posted a, a survey. Um, you all are, by the way, and ask your questions in the chat and I will get to your questions shortly. Um, it's so great to see you hop on. I'm really glad to have you all here. Um, so this survey was super, super interesting. And obviously I, I said, if you fill this out, I'm going to do a giveaway. So, um, now is the day to do a giveaway and I'm going to share just a little bit of a few of the really interesting answers, um, about the creativity questionnaire. I'm not going to go too deep into it because that's part of some other stuff that we'll be working on. Um, so I'm going to ask someone on here um, on, that's, that I can see that has said hello in the chat. So if you um, want to be the one that gets to choose <laughs> who the winner is, here's how we're going to do it. Um, I'm going to pick somebody that I see that's in the chat that has said hello. And actually, you know what, Joe Williams, if you're still listening, um, Joe is from North Wales. She hops on quite often. I'm really grateful to hear from her. Joe, what I want you to do is select a number between one and 573. <laughs> That's how many responses we got. 573. So Joe Williams from North Wales, if you can pick a number between, uh, one and 573 and post it in the chat. I'm going to select that number and we'll go to, I've got it live on my screen, on my computer screen. Okay. She just picked great job. Okay. Joe Williams just picked 248. So I'm going to type that number in right now and we're going to see who won 248. Um, I made a major, <laughs> I was an idiot and I didn't ask for your names, but I'm assuming. So number 248 is J Susan Clark. So Susan Clark, you are the winner of a fabric bundle from Collage Quilter. So congratulations. I will be emailing you and try and track you down um, about how to get this to you, this fabric bundle to you. Um, so anyway, thank you everybody for participating. Now let me share a few of the kind of interesting things um, that we pulled up uh some of the responses so let me take a look at this again you know what? i need to write that down no we've got it in the chat so 248 susan clark is the winner um okay so now i what i think has been interesting is where you all find um inspiration um, I think the most common now, again, we've had a lot of responses and I haven't gone through absolutely everything, but I have over the weeks been checking out what people say. And it's, it is really interesting. The majority, the number one answer has been in nature. So I'm really excited about that because we have some, when we're going to do kind of our garden party, we're going to pull in some of your, um, what inspires you in nature? We're going to have a really fun garden party today or um, in when we do our quilt along. So I found that really interesting that nature is the probably the top um, source of inspiration. Um, now, the biggest barriers to creativity in your life, um, I think the top three um, what number one would be time. People really said that time is probably the most um, difficult thing. It's hard to carve out the time to do it. And then number two is expense. Um, number three is a lack of confidence. So kind of, kind of interesting responses there. Um, obviously this um, so this is the last, so the last thing that I'm going to share with you, and you know, there were multiple questions, but the last thing that I'm going to share, um, the vast majority of people who responded to this survey 
they express their creativity through quilting. And the next highest um, answer was painting, which it thrilled me to death because I would really like to do more painting and kind of interesting. I feel like the barrier in my life to doing more painting is time and um and i want to i want to overcome that so i will be inviting you to come along with me and we're gonna maybe do some little paint classes coming up and um so i think that would be fun okay so that's the creativity questionnaire now let me get back to just a few housekeeping things and then i want to take a look at um questions and um yeah okay so first things first one more reminder about the parrot webinar um this saturday i think it's at nine o'clock on saturday let me double check on uh let me look at my calendar here um yeah we've got it from nine to about 10 30 and so just a reminder that we'll be working on the parrot um, that's in my book. So the book that has the parrot is Collage Quilter Essentials. I call it Essentials because this is the basic book for um, kind of learning my color theory and how to apply color theory as I see it to collage quilts. Um, it's also the book that talks about products, and then there are several um, several projects. One of them, obviously, is the is the parrot. So, um, one more item about the, so there are a few. I think there are three spots left in that webinar. That's this Saturday morning. If you want to participate, um, because it's something that you're working on, I'd love to have you. And if you can't make it, even if you if you register, I'll be sure to provide you with the replay so that you have access to that. Um, okay, one more thing about the book. I just got word from my publisher. So I'm the publisher. I pay to have the book published. Um, prices are increasing to me. And <laughs> they said, you're going to be upside down if you don't increase your retail price. So I'm telling you now, if you have not bought the book, um, buy it on my website now or on Amazon um, because the price is going to be going up. Um, I have to raise the prices by, let's see, by next week. So um, the, the prices will go from, it's $29 right now on my website up to probably $35 so that I can cover my cost to print. Um, okay. So that's that. I'm sorry to do that. I wanted to keep it. Um, I wanted to keep the price low, but prices are increasing because of the, I assume because of the chaotic world that we live in. Um, okay. So let's get to your questions. Uh, Pamela just asked a question. She said, in regards to the parrot shop this weekend, Will we be making one thus need to come with prepared fabric versus learning by watching you in a lecture format? Um, and she said, does it matter which pair we make? So I have people do it either way. If you want to be prepared to make the parrot as I go along, that's great. You'll want to have all of your fabric uh, selected and prepared with the steam -a seam and be ready to move forward. However, I think it's very, very helpful for I'll be going through the process of fabric selection. Um, and, and I think that's a really helpful part of the discussion uh, because fabric selection when you're making a collage is the most important step. And I think it's the step that most people feel like they need help with. So we'll be going through fabric selection. If you want to jump ahead and select your fabric and have your fabric ready to go so that you can work on it at the same time as me, that's great. So either way, you can just sit and absorb it and um, ask me questions, or you can work along with me. And excuse me, no, it doesn't matter which uh, parrot you use. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Pamela. 
let's start at the top and just um, say hello to everybody. Make sure that I'm answering your questions. Okay, so Kentucky and Texas, New Mexico. Hello, everyone from Germany. Thank you so much for joining us, Chrissy. Um, <clears throat> Butte, Montana. Um, oh, she said she used to sign her paintings with a ladybug. That's darling. I love it. Um, okay. Um, good news about Amelia. Doris said, yep, we're excited. I'm super excited to have Amelia back. Um, let's see here. If there are any other questions. If you ever have a question about something that you're working on, um, this is a great format so I can answer it live. Let me get a drink. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Susan, Suzanne said, you're so creative and productive. I'll tell you what, I, um, I am a little bit of a workaholic. Um, I, I love to work and I love to be productive, um, but it can also make me crazy. But I also, this is what I do for a living. Um, I've, I've chosen to do this so that I can be home and be with my children and that I can employ my daughter. And I am very, very fortunate. I have a wonderful life. I love, love what I do. <coughs> Okay, um, I will talk some more about some of my tips for being productive. That's again in something that's coming up um, <coughs> as it relates to creativity. Sorry. Ugh. Um, <clears throat> let's see, Doris just asked, I may have missed this info. Will this shoe pattern be available so that we can order? Yes. My goal is to get this done in the next week or two, and we will uh, make that available for sale. Um, <clears throat> and let's see here. Great to see all of you. I love it when you say hello because I recognize your names. Um, let's see here. Great to have you, Deborah, from New Jersey. I love to see your face. I am great today. Um, <clears throat> okay, Judy just asked a question. I just saw a fish, a crab, and octopus in your video clips. Where do I find those patterns? Are they in your latest book? Um, no, I'm still working on them. I haven't finished them. As I said, I've kind of, I've kind of hopped around a little bit just so that I can maintain my interest level. After I finished the Wee Green Beasties quilt, um, which had all these critters, and, and then I was going to move to the Sea Creatures quilt, I just was feeling a little bit not motivated. So one of my tricks is think about what I want to do. This is playtime with me. And if I can, can make myself feel like this is playtime and not work, then I enjoy it. And that's why that's how I busted out this quilt and got started on this one. But I will, so now this is done, this is in the works. I'm gonna get back to, um, well, that Sea Creatures quilt design and pattern will be coming out later in the, in the, in the, in the next couple of months. I'm not gonna give you a date because I don't know, um, but I promise that that will be forthcoming. Um, <clears throat> Anna from Portugal, welcome. Um, let's see here. Thank you, Connie. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Okay. First time. Hello from Southern Oregon. Welcome. And, uh, oh, somebody mentioned that they love to paint quilts. Now that's something I have never done. I've never painted right on a quilt. Um, but I, I am, we are going to explore a few more creative options and I'm going to give you a creative, I'm going to give you a tour of my studio and kind of talk about how all the, all the little things that I have, um, because I've been a creative entrepreneur for really 30 years, um, I have a pretty well stocked studio with all kinds of supplies different mediums. I love to use different mediums. So I'm going to take you on a tour of that very soon. We'll, we'll talk about maybe some things that we want to work on. 
Um, thank you, Suzanne. Okay, let's see. Um, Tammy just confirmed fabric selection is definitely the hardest part. And I think that's where I can help you the most. So, um, all right, great. It's so fun to have you people joining us who are at work. <laughs> don't get caught and don't get in trouble. Um, let's see. Lynn just asked a question. Did you quilt your orchid or did you leave it alone? Um, my orchid quilt, I quilted it and it's under a pile of quilts back there. So I'm not going to go grab it, but I, if Lynn, if you ask this question in the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group, I'll post a picture of it for you. Okay. Uh, Zena just asked a question. What style of prints do you look for when choosing fabrics for your collage quilts? Um, that is a fabulous question. Um, so, and it's, it's a pretty big question because I have a lot to say about fabric selection. Um, so I do mention, I talk about fabric selection in my book. Um, I also talk about fabric selection in my paid videos. So I'm not going to go into too much about fabric selection here. Um, there is also, I believe there's a free video on my um, Teachable platform. So that has um, information about shopping for fabric and what to look for. Um, so let me see if I can pull up that website right now for you and I'll put it in the chat, okay? Okay, so my um, I have paid videos at collagequilteracademy.teachable.com and I'm pretty sure that there is, okay, I just put that in the chat so that you can go see, I'm pretty sure there's a, yes, shopping for fabric, my best tips about what to look for when selecting fabric. And if you need to go a little bit deeper, um, get my book or sign up for one of my, um, my classes. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Karen just said, do you have fussy cut fabric uh, fabric bundles available, flowers and leaves yet for purchase? Not quite, but we're, we're, we are on the cusp. I've got just a few more um, pieces that I'm waiting for, and then we'll start putting those together. Um, it's my goal really to put out the fabric bundles so that we keep those in stock. So I'm really trying hard and I apologize. It takes a lot of effort to, to select each and every piece of fabric and then um, cut and prepare it for sale. So we're getting there, Karen. It will be in the next, um, it'll be this, it'll be in March sometime that we have those available. I wanna make sure that there, that those fussy cutting bundles are available by the time we are ready to start our next quilt along. So, okay. Um, I don't see any other questions and we're coming up on the half hour mark. Um, Katie uh, just said fabric painting with ink, ink tense pencils is a very rewarding and relaxing. And I've only dabbled with it a little bit. So maybe we'll do a little bit more with our ink tense pencils. Um, Lynn just asked a great question. She said, how often do you admit new members to your Facebook groups. I've been waiting for a few days. I know you're very busy. I'm very impatient. <laughs> I know, sorry. No, don't apologize. So Lynn, um, while Am when Amelia was working for uh, this other interior design firm and she pulled back, I was feeling really, really swamped with running the business and trying to create. And my son has had um, state high school championship swimming one weekend and then we were just out of town for another state championship swimming event anyway his swimming is over and i am not going to be um distracted by swimming so i feel like okay we're i'm gonna we're gonna be super productive and get on that normally here's the other thing i want you to know a lot of times um i will take saturday and sundays off um, so if you request to join or you purchase something on a Friday afternoon, a lot of times we won't get to it until Monday. Um, but I will make certain that we get through the request to join today 
So um, thank you for your enthusiasm. I love it. Um, okay, let's see. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, so somebody just asked, and I'm sorry that I can't see your name. Um, it's probably somebody that I know on our Facebook group, but you selected my frog to be in a special place. That was so exciting for me. I don't know exactly what that means. So um, I have, uh, I, there are, I have, a, I can save posts that are, um, so I have, a, I have a special category that I, if I see something that I really love and I'm super excited about what somebody did with one of my patterns, I put it on this list and it's amazing customer creations is the list. So that is probably where your frog turned up. And yeah, you should feel honored, I guess, because I keep those that I'm really impressed by. So well done. Thank you for sharing. And um, okay, so somebody else just said they'd like to explore using ink tense pencils. Um, yeah, and we can talk about using aloe vera and um, different mediums. So I, I am really excited for the next, it's getting to, feel like spring here. I hope in your neck of the woods, it's starting to feel like spring. And I am just like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to get creative with you and really even explore some different mediums. And um, so we're going to, we're going to do it. I'm glad to hear that some of you are interested in that. Okay. Um, ooh, Diane said painting. I love the technique I learned from Esterita Austin, I'm not sure who that is. You actually paint on parchment and transfer it to the back of organza. No problem with reversal and you can trace through the parchment. That sounds interesting. I would be really, I'm very curious about that. So it is 1130. I've been talking now for 30 minutes and I um, don't want to um, take any more of your time, but I am so glad that you joined me. Amy just asked a question. Have you washed and dried projects that you've made after using ink tense pencils? Was it color fast? Um, that's a great question. So I just washed and dried the Wee Green Beasties quilt. Let me grab that and um, show you <clears throat> how it works. Okay, hang on. Now I didn't use um, I didn't use an excessive amount, but there's the frog. You can I I used um, the ink tense pencils on his eyeball, and you know it 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 does seem like it has faded a little bit. So, but it is still there. I mean the eye still looks really really very realistic and beautiful and I'm very happy with it. So he's been through the washer and the dryer. And while I do think the the ink tents has faded a little bit, I think it still works pretty well. Same with the eyeball there on the Cricut. And let's see, where else did I use ink tents? Um, I don't think I used it on anything else. So that's the best answer I can give you, Amy, but it's a great question and maybe we'll uh, we'll do some testing with it, okay? Okay, thank you everybody for joining me. As always, this is such a highlight of my life to see you. I hope that you are all doing well. My thoughts and prayers are with our friends in Ukraine um, and Europe. I can imagine that this is a very unsettling time to be living in Europe and um, just want you to know that we are thinking of you and um, I'm gonna do whatever I can to, to show my support. I've got a friend actually that I'm communicating over Facebook with who fled Kiev and he is now in Poland with his family. And um, he just sent me, a, sent me a Facebook message right before I hopped on. And he said, um, my friend, in Kiev, he was just on the phone. Kiev is under missile strikes this very moment. He was on the phone with his friend and his friend said he needed to run because he heard an explosion. Um, he said, uh, my friend in Kiev is trying to help our citizens who took up arms to defend our city. 
He said they need some money to buy food and equipment for their for the defenders and their families. So uh, we're I'm my thoughts and prayers, and I'm hoping to get some money to kind of help support that family. So anyway, um, I love you guys. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day and pray for peace. Okay, take care. We will be in touch and have some more fun together again soon.